with some um, probability, with probability, it's it's so it's such a divisive kind of um, topic, right? Because people either love it or hate it. Okay, and I think the reason why people feel so strongly about it is because it's probability. There's not necessarily any rules, right? We have some, you know, maybe guidelines. So you know that um, line from Paris of the Caribbean when they're talking about parlay. Okay. It's more of a they're more what you call guidelines, right? So he's, he's saying that there, there are rules, but there are also exceptions to those rules. And that's how I, how I feel about probability, right? We have these kind of procedures in place, but sometimes we have to do something a bit different depending on the question that we've got. So on that note, the most important thing in probability is to interpret the question. The most important thing is to interpret the question. In saying that, I will give you some quote unquote rules on them. And I have three of them. The first one is the sample space. Because probability or theoretical probability really hinges on this idea of a sample space, right? What are all the possible outcomes? If it's small enough, you can actually just list the possible outcomes. Okay, if it's if it's realistic. Okay. Um, for example, this works really well for kind of basic ones, right? If I look at the first question there, um, Jesse, can you read it out for me? The first question. Okay. So what are the possible things here? But this one, this one, all I'm looking at is I'm just saying, okay, how many jelly beans can I select from? Well, there's 12, 8, 7, 8, yeah, so there's 30 in total, okay? And then you could just really say, okay, what's the probability of a red? Well, that's 12 out of 30. What's the probability of a yellow? That's 7, seven out of 30. 30. And then what was the question asking for? Red plus yellow. Yeah, they were saying, well, we're saying red or yellow. Can you do that? So the probability of the red or yellow when I see this word all, I just think I just think the sum of, yeah, so that would be 12 over 30 plus 7 over 30, which is just 19 over 30. Okay. So I've a kind of simple one to start off with. And here, what's the sample? So I'm saying there's 30 in total that I can choose from. That, that's how many possible out, um, outcomes I could have, right? Now, another really common question is they ask things involving a tree diagram. Tree diagram. And I know with tree diagrams, okay, there are ways that I interact with the probabilities along the branches, okay? So if you see the word and, or, or okay, so and what are you saying, Keenan? What do I do with them if I see the word and? I, what's the operation I do? Multiply, right? I multiply along the branches. Multiply along left and right. If you see the word or, well, we read it up here, didn't we? If you see the word or, you s you're thinking of sum up and down. Summing up and down. Okay? So let's look at the other example that Jesse was talking about now. Ben, can you read it out? Uh, a packet of lolly contains five red and 14 green. So this is why you actually want to be really comfortable with your tree diagrams because in some HEC questions they actually ask you to draw a tree diagram. Right, exactly. Yeah. So the first question is saying draw a tree diagram to show the possible outcomes, include the probability on each branch. So there's only two outcomes here to start us off. All right. There's red or green, but their probabilities are different, aren't they? I've got 5 out of 19 and 14 out of 19. In this case, though, what you want to look at is the question. It says, without replacement. What do I want to make a note of there, then? One less each branch. Yeah, so without. So I know that the sample space is going to be changing. So when I draw out my next branch of red and green, well, I know I'm only going to have 18 jelly beans, right? But also being careful of, as you're going along here, I also have one less red, red jelly bean, right? Mm -hmm. That's 4 out of 18. But along this track here, I 
have the same amount of same amount of green ones. But yeah. one less jelly bean. Exactly. So same idea for this one. I've uh, five out of eighteen, and this one would be thirteen out of eighteen. Once you construct that tree diagram, it makes it so easy to write out the sample space, the possible outcomes. Um, cool. So that's part one. Part two says, find the probability that the two lollies are of different colors. One little trap that you might think of is, okay, two colors here. Oh yeah, R, G, G, R. There's two of them. Two out of four, so it should be half. Why is that wrong? Okay. All I'm looking at is just the outcomes here. But these aren't equally likely, are they? No. Right? So what you need to do is come back to this rule. When you're looking at the tree diagram, when you see and, you're going along. When you see or, you're summing up and down. 519.18 um, plus what? Okay, so slow down first, right? Before I even do this, before I even do this, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to write out what I'm doing. Which ones are two different colors? Okay. So I'm saying that the probability of two different colors is equal to P of RG plus P of GR. Because if I want to go along the branches, that's when I multiply. But if I want to go up and down the branches, I need to... Plus. Some, right? So th those are the rules that I'm looking at here, right? Well, what is RG? Well, that's what I'm going to multiply now, right? Five so 5 over 19 nine. times 4 over 18. Yep. 5 over 19 times 4 over 18 plus, and I'll go along here, 4 over 19 times 5 over 18. So what is it? Sorry, 14. 14 over 19. Isn't that like four, the second one's meant to be 14 over 19? Oh, yeah, that should be 14 over 19. Thanks. Yep. So like 14 over 19 exactly. times yeah, well, 5 over 18. Mm -hmm. Okay. No. And look right? Yeah. Any questions about that one? Any questions about that one? I have, I have a third kind of uh, rule with this now. Because, yes, this works for basic ones and for tree diagrams, right? But sometimes it seems like in the questions, it seems like I can't do either of those. Or it seems a bit difficult to do those. We can still use these rules. We just have to modify them slightly. When I look at these ideas and and or, right, if I see those words, I automatically think and is multiply, or is sum. But they don't always use those words, as you'll find in the questions. How do you know which one to do? Here's the trick that I use. This is my third rule. If the things can happen, consecutively or simultaneously, that's when I multiply, okay? So, if the event could happen consecutively, consecutively and simultaneously, we are going to multiply. If things can happen, and this is my terminology here, it's definitely not an official one, but if it could be like an alternate universe, then I'm sum. Okay, so let me recap that. If the event can happen consecutively or simultaneously, I will multiply. If it's an alternate universe, I'm going to sum them. I'm going to add them. Okay. How does this work? We'll look at the next question. Is that the multi-stage? Yeah. So this is um, what we call multi-stage probability, so it's a bit trickier. Um, Callum, could you read it out for me? The high school has 52% female students and 48% male students. A random survey carried out three students selected. I'm probably that high, or three of the male. Okay. So, for this kind of question, you could potentially draw a tree diagram, okay? But I am going to do it without it, just to show you a one way you could do it, right? First of all, I have these ratios here. If I was just selecting one student, if I was just selecting one student, what's the probability that they are female? 52 over 100. Yeah, 52 over 100. The probability that they're male is just 48 over 100. That's actually enough for us to answer these questions. Because if I'm looking for the probability that all three are male, here's what I'm thinking, right? Here's, here's my rationale. Are these things happening consecutively or simultaneously? In the sense that, okay, I pick one, pick one person, then I pick one person, yeah, then I pick one person. That's something that's consecutive, right? Does that make sense? Right? It's consecutive. So all I have to do is multiply my probabilities of the males individually. 48 over 100 
cubed. Times 48 over 100, times 48 over 100. Yeah, and you can understand it as 48 over 100 cubed, and you should get... 1728 over 15625. Yep, 15625. Um, yep. How come we don't say that you get 47 over 99, 46, 7, 98? Okay, that's a good question, right? And the same thing with the light bulb one that you had in your exam, right? Why doesn't the sample space here change? Well, that's because, right, they're telling you, they're telling you, um, yeah, they, they really need to be specific if that was to happen, okay? They need to be specific if that's going to happen, if the sample space is going to be changing. So you, you'd assume that it's not, right? Yeah. What about the next question? Part two, part two, all three are the same gender. Okay. The same female. Okay, so can you see, this is what I mean by alternate universes here, right? When you pick only three people, it's only possible to pick all three males or all three females or something like that, right? Well, if I want to see, if I want to see both, yeah, I'm talking about all three of the same gender, oh, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm saying that, yeah, this is equal to the probability that I have three males. Plus the probability of three females. Yeah, and the probability of three females, right? The reason why I say it's like an alternate universe is saying, imagine in one situation I pick all three males. Imagine another situation where I pick all three females. Those can't happen simultaneously, can't they? Right? I'm only picking three people. Yeah. So, if it's an alternate universe, I have to <laughs> sum them. I have to sum them. Does that make sense? That's easy. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And then just go 52 over 100 cubed, and then you get 160. Well, I, I asked you, does it make sense? Because this was a very common mistake in the exam, right? Like, I, I think it's very easy when we do it here, but here's the framework I want you guys to be thinking about. Here are the rules or guidelines that we're using, right? So, find the probability of all three males and all three females, and then add them together. So, we already have all males, that's 17, 28, yeah. over 15, 1, 5, 60, 25, plus... 52 over 100 cubed. Yeah, what is that? 157 over 625. I should just write it like this, actually. Yeah, it's a bad idea. It's a bad way to do it. 48 over 100 cubed. 25. Cool, 157 over 625. Okay. Oh. okay. Do we trust public? I do, because that's the same side Wait. Are we doing 52 over 100 to the power of 3? Yeah. I got Don't just do 52 cubed to the 100. Do it in brackets. You do it in brackets. Yeah, I got 2,000. No, no, no. no. Uh, just, no, when you add them together. Oh, yeah. when you add them together. Yeah. Okay. Um, the next question I said, there is at least one female. A couple of ways you can do this. There's, there's an easy way and there's a hard way. When you see at least one, what are you thinking of? One minus one. Or okay, so I know that the probably at least... This is part three. At least one female one, two, is equal to one minus P of no females, right? But in this case, when do I have no females? At the males, so it's just one minus. That yeah, one. right, I already have that here. So you can see how they're phrased slightly differently, but they're the same thing, aren't they? Right? So here, the language you have to be really careful of. Okay, all three males, well, that's the same as no females. So that's actually just going to be one minus whatever that value was, 1728 over 1565. I think you get a decimal when you put it in your calculator. You get like 0 0.88 or something. You get uh, 0 0.88, so 89%. 90, what is yeah. it? 90, 0 0.8, 9, 4, 9, 4, 8, 9, 4, 8, okay. Yeah. And then 89%, yeah. Yeah, let's just leave it like that. Last, last question we'll do. Or maybe we can do the harder one as well. We'll see. Okay, there is at most two males. This one kind of threw people off, I think, in the exam. There is at most... Was this question I was Well, something very similar. Probably at, le at most two males. Yeah, I don't want to actually do that. I want to actually go back to this first strategy here. Here are my rules, right? If you're ever stuck, just follow these. It's never, it's never wrong to draw a sample space tree diagram and then try and understand yourself. If you're stuck, I'm trying to do it without doing these things right now. But if you're stuck, let's just go back to writing the sample just space, one right? Minus the females, the no. Okay, so Calum, this is what I'm saying, right? Like, I want to be, I want to be certain. I want to be certain that I'm writing this, doing this right. Yeah. What are all my different possibilities? One way you can check is this is for the extension students; they know this better. But there are actually eight possible outcomes that I can get, eight different possible outcomes. Okay. So let me start by trying to write them all. M M M, M M F. Trying to try and write it systematically as well. F, F, F. 
Um, I think I can get F, F, M, F, M, F. What else am I missing? Uh, I've already got that. I'm writing out all the outcomes oh, I can have. Uh, M, I've got that. M, F, M, yep. One more. M, M, F. F M F M I've got that. F M M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F M F Hang on, at most two males, that's 0, 1, or 2. So you can't have 3. Yeah, so that the only thing in this situation, the only reason why it's the complement is because I am only selecting from 3, oh, right? Two. Yeah, but it's not always the complement, right? You have to check so one, one, using the sample space. Yeah, you have to check using the sample space what's actually possible here. Well, at most two males, that's all of these. I could find all of these and add them up individually. Or I could just say that's the same as 1 minus the probability of all three. Where is the probability of a... So, why there's no females? Just to... So, we get the same, we'll get the same answer. I didn't even intend that, that's so funny. Okay, but can you see how we can phrase them differently, yeah? Yeah. I'll, I will do that one last question with you. That's okay, yeah, read it out for me. What is probably the single card draw from a standard deck of people who are playing cards with a red card for a even All right. It's harder because it's deceiving, right? So either I'm from a 52 card deck. From a f I know, but I want to talk to it. From a 52 card deck, I, I want either a red, either a red, or an even. And when you see this word or, right, we're immediately thinking adding, right? I know that the probability of a red, well, that's just half, or 26 out of 52. What's the probability of an even number? Yeah, because. Yeah, just how many other numbers we have? Should be. Is it? Is it? This? No. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Oh. Yeah. So let's let's finish before we go. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Times four. Times four. So it's twenty. Look, twenty. Twenty. Yeah. So twenty out of fifty-two. My natural instinct is to add these together because I see the word or. But what am I forgetting? They're on different branches. Some double, some double up. Some double up. And that's one of the biggest mistakes in probability, doubling up your counting. So, because some can be red and even, you're adding those on again. How many even cards would be red? Half of them. Half of these, right? So, the probability of red or even would be equal to... Yes, I can still add them together. I can still use that rule. That's my guideline. But, what do you think I need to do to finish? Uh, you got a minus off of the one to the minus Yeah, so I'll minus 10 on 52. Does that mean this is 10 cards above? Yes, right? So I'm double counting there, can you see that? Yeah. And if I add that, I think it's 20, it's just 26. 36 on 52. 36, sorry, yeah, 36 on 52. That's your answer. Does that make sense? So, here are my rules, but they're kind of like guidelines. You have to be flexible with them as well. Okay. Okay.